Yeah, I grew up in, in the, it was the mid, mid 80s. Uh, when I started playing, it was getting to be the later 80s. And, and it, was, it, was, it was flash metal. I, I love like the crazy spandexy loud guitars. Oh. What made you think you could do it? Oh, I just didn't, never thought I couldn't do it. <laughs> there, was, there was never a, like, typical? I can do this. It was, it was, it was uh, let's, let's do it. You know, there was no, there was no thinking I could or couldn't. It was just like, I guess I always had a why not me attitude, you know, why not? Pick up a guitar and start playing. And that, that it sounded very good. But, <laughs> but, but you thought that it was in you and that it would come out. I've always loved me. Yeah, I've been playing. Always wanted to play music. I've always been attracted to music as a path. It's always been, there's never been any other thing I really ever wanted to do. Anything else I ever wanted to do was uh, just basically making up for some latent insecurity, probably, that, that, you know, that, you know, that was getting in the way of me actually doing it. So... You know, and I keep keep working with those to flush those away. Okay. Was music always part of you? It was always part of me, definitely. I mean, from the time I was in the backyard, laying in the hammock, looking up at the sky in between the weeping willow trees and singing at the top of my lungs, I always loved music. First time I ever harmonized was with my, with my mom and my sister in the dining room to Sentimental Journey. I remember Ooh. that distinctly. And then going to sleep with music at night, you know, and it went from classical to all of a sudden I was listening to rock and roll and then my mom's like how are you relaxing and going to sleep with that it was just it was just our music wow yeah. what did you expect music would bring to you was it just something was it something to do did you want it as a career did you think that was an option I think when I was in high school I wanted to you know go to California bring my guitar uh -huh. you know Joni Mitchell Carol King and whatever that meant um, and I guess I was you know I was just too chicken I guess it was what it was yeah. amounting to. But it's always just, I think music for me has always just been such a, it's an international language. It's just a way of connecting with people. It's a great, um, it's a great soother of the savage soul. It's a great way to, you know, to dance. I love to dance. So <laughs> it's all of those things. And then, you know, realizing that music was coming through me was just, that was just such a thrill. All of a sudden it was like, wow, writing songs. That has to be an amazing feeling. It is. It definitely. Does it is. surprise you when it comes, uh, when a song comes out oh, of yeah. you? Oh yeah, every time, every time. When especially if it's a decent song, yeah. you finish the song and, and it, there's a there's it's weird. There's a moment where there's the writing of the song, and then when you're done with the song and you've started playing with it, it's almost becomes like a cover song, like you're almost playing someone else's song. Uh huh. So and then it, it, it and then. It, like I can remember the, the, the feeling of writing the song and the energy that's there and how exciting it feels to be getting a song. And then when I, when I sit and I'm playing it in a performance or someone's talking about, oh, how'd that song come together? Suddenly I'm like, wow, how the heck did that happen? You know, what made me put that there? Or where did that note come from? Or something, especially when it's something very unlike what I had done prior. It's like, wow, you know, where, where did that come from? I don't, I don't really know the answer to that, you know? It's, it's, yeah. uh, I don't know, just, just interesting one. It bubbles up out of you. Yeah, it? it's like, they're out there, I think, the songs, you know, so just kind of. the auto shop down on Warner Avenue Fixing up the fancy cars whenever they need a tune-up Green lights, the piston fires And he's off on his pursuit for the world that's living on his tattoos Rachel studies nutrition, it's what she's really meant to do Count calories like a peens and plating up the prunes She wants to settle down, she's ready to make a move But can he see in stars not a roof? talk much about it though I wonder what he'll choose he's the kind of overreach when there's something left to prove his sister talks about him like some hero in a movie only hold that in his heart he's not a fool let's talk about Rachel and her motorcycle rider he's a man on the move she's a stalwart pretty girl who's 
is all about love and quietly knows he'll never understand Kenny's off the mission she's been changing all the rules no more sugar for the coffee they take in all the stools Freeman stops at the donut shop where the voice of rage and ruin for each girl whose only crime was passing through sometimes I wonder about those useless attitudes all the rhymes and all the reasons all the pimps and all the prudes his sister talks about him like some hero in a movie she knows that in his heart he's not a fool let's talk about Rachel and her motorcycle rider he's a man on the move she's a stalwart pretty girl who's all about love and quietly knows he'll never understand Time is precious, just depends on how you use it. In a church or on a street, it's still easy to abuse it. Here I am talking like I'm some hero in your movie. Only hope that in my heart I'm not the fool. Let's talk about Rachel and her motorcycle rider. He's a man on move. She's a stalwart pretty girl who's all about love and quietly knows he'll never understand. Rachel and her motorcycle rider. He's the man. He's the moon. She's a stalwart, pretty girl who's all about love and quietly knows he'll never understand. And when did you become a traveling salesman? <laughs> How'd that uh, persona come about? I, you know, that's interesting. Um, like music has been a, a like a long, a long kind of. I've had a kind of a long battle with it, sort of. Um, the battle between doing what you love to do and being okay making a living doing what you love to do. Um, and it's not like it's like a very unconscious thing, you know. To sort of, I had to I had to spend a lot of time coming to the point where I could reconcile being a musician and being a business person. And so the, a lot of, and I mean, I didn't intentionally write like this record in this way that it was gonna, like that it was gonna happen, but in the writing process, a lot of these songs are about kind of stepping out mm -hmm. uh, and being who you are in, in, in the world. And so the traveling salesman is like, you know, the metaphor for for, for selling, being a musician, a traveling musician. And selling it's music. an excellent metaphor and goes incredibly with this voice that comes out of where? <laughs> I don't know. Some people like it and some people don't. <laughs> well, is it on purpose? I mean, we, we're talking and you don't sound like that. And my dad said that too. He's like, you don't sound like that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I probably sound more like myself when I'm singing than when I'm talking because someone taught me how to sing a little bit and... No one ever taught me how to talk. <laughs> but, but, okay. But um, I don't know. What do you think? Of what? I don't know. Well, how you got your voice? Yeah, how did I get my voice? <laughs> did you swallow a cello? She knew. Yeah, I swallowed a cello. <laughs> swallowed a cello. Yeah. No, I think I think it, it comes out as a persona because as a songwriter who's also a singer then is a performer. So I think that there's it, it kind of all gets wrapped up. Traveling salesman, I work for a fair man. Look in my eyes and you'll know that I'm good. Run around a lot and I'll never stop. Though I'm tired and I'm hoarse and run through.
Traveling salesman, and I work for the sale. Turning out rhymes from my thoughts and my blues. Hey, hey, take me home. Lights have fallen on my mood. Hey, take me over where they holler at the moon. Oh, lover, can you pick me up? I'm falling down the tubes, lover. Make me new. I'm a traveling salesman, I walk with a prayer. You realize all my thoughts there for you. Are you left behind? And off you ride. And I'm a traveling salesman, it's not what my family wants. The smiles cannot hide all their wounds. March on, spread the news. Hey, clovers as we holler at the moon. Oh, lover, can you pick me up? We'll drive and sing our tunes, lover. Just me and you. Salesman on a rambling road, moving at random but never alone. I'm shaking a rock out from under my shoes and taking the band out for one more tune. One more tune, one more night, one more song, and I wrote them all for you. I'm a traveling salesman. Traveling salesman Traveling salesman, yeah One last time before I go Traveling salesman incredibly brave of you to be raising a family as a musician. Oh, you know my wife. How's it going? My wife. Uh, <laughs> she, she keeps me uh, living in the manner I am accustomed. No. Does she? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not completely untrue. It, 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 Roxanne. She's, you know, <laughs> Roxanne. <laughs> no, God, that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> We edit. Uh, look at it. It's fun. It's fun. No, um, no. My wife's a teacher uh, in the schools, and so you know she does. She does pretty in well in the Roslyn School yep. District. Yep. Oh, yep. okay. And uh, I still still work a couple of days a week in the city. I do a little bit of computer work and consulting work that way. Um, I was able to kind of take. For there was a lot of years where I wasn't playing music, and so mm -hmm. I was able to kind of take the the computer and design skills I learned in those years. And now I can apply them to. Helping some folks out, like on a freelance basis, which right. is nice. Um, but I, I think, yeah, my wife is a, is a super supporter of what I do. So, yeah. and if I, I wouldn't be able, to, I mean, well, it's not true. I would be able to do it, but everybody would hate me. And you've been a teacher. Mm -hmm. I was a teacher for eleven years, and then, as they say, I left my day job, and I did it on a leave of absence basis the first year, and. 
again, my supportive husband, you know, I couldn't, I could have done it without that, mm -hmm. but it would have been a very different grind, you know, then it would have had to have been constant and not necessarily the, the freedom of creation that I've had because he's been so supportive of, of my efforts. It takes a lot of energy to live life that way. Oh, yeah. It's a compulsion more, you know. Um, I, it's almost like there's no choice. You know, I, I, I said that before about my wife with her motorcycle. It's like she has no choice. She feels absolutely compelled to do this. Um, it's the same with music. There's like, it's, if I'm not, you know, I, I literally, I, I, I've put it down so many times over the years and been like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. And then it's like, it just comes up stronger each time. And it's like, no, you're not done with this. Whatever it is, it's just, it's, it's, I have no real control over that. And so there's like, if I'm sitting down, and I do spend a lot of time sitting and doing nothing, or I'll sit, you know, just kind of breathe and try and get some guidance on what I'm supposed to do next. But then suddenly, if there's that urge, okay, it's time to book these shows, or sign, it, it, I just can't not do it, you know? So that's just me. I mean, I know a lot of people who, who, who do have trouble a lot with that kind of struggle. Mm -hmm. Where they sit and they just well, they'll put the covers over and be like, yeah, I can't. Ever, you know? But yeah, I, I just and there've been moments like that over the time, but but for the most part, it, there's yeah, it's like it's once I get my marching orders like at that level, it's like I just keep going until I feel like I've, I've either hit the end of it or or I have to or I, or it gets foggy and I have to wait and see what the next thing is that I'm supposed to do. Yeah, so it's really weird. It's changing. It's always shifting. I don't even know how to form this next question because I don't really know enough. Um, but I know what the form of a short story is. I know what the form of a novel is and the, the twists and the turn. I don't know what the form of a complete song is. What does it, ha what does it contain so that then you know it's done? Oh, when it's, for when it's done? Do you know what I'm saying? I, to I do know what you're saying, yeah. Well, I, I think there's a couple of things. There, there are different structures of songs. Uh -huh. you know, there's, there's verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. There's songs that have bridge in it, and that's sort of that missing piece that threads together, like usually right before either the outro chorus or the outro verse. It, there's a lot of different structures that if you want to try to write into those structures, you know, you're paying attention to which comes first. You know, I wrote I wrote one song, "Falling," and I brought it to my songwriting group, and they nailed me immediately. As soon as I as soon as I opened my mouth, I had my chorus was my, my verse was my chorus, and they said, "No, no, 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 you get you." And they were absolutely right. And it, when I went back and I looked at it, I was like, "Of course, how could I? How could I have missed that?" You know, the repeating refrain or the hook depending depends on where the hook is. So there's all different structures. And this is, that can't be learned. This. No, this, I, I actually belong to a songwriting group um, that we bring our songs and we help each other, we critique each other's work. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> because? I, it's just, it's like, I know when it's right or not. I know when the song's right. It's just me. I, I mean, I, 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 and I can't like, I don't know, I, I, I know the process of writing is, is a long one. And so if the song is right, and I don't begrudge that. I think it's wonderful that people have the ability to sit down and talk about uh -huh. their songs with each other. When I sit and write, I just get a I get a vibe for it. Like I can feel it. Like if I play through the song and I get I get the goosebumps, or if I feel that you know that there's a good energy, or if my wife doesn't tell me to stop, you know, or my daughter <laughs> actually starts shaking a little bit, and like you know, <laughs> then I start to know that there's something there. But for me, I'll take the chance on a song and I'll bring it out and play it for people. And if they tune out. I know that it's not working. Okay. If, if I'm not attached to it, that I can't see if it's working or not, I'll start playing it out, and, and I'll get a feel for the audience that way. But there's a trick there, too, because sometimes the song is right, but you're not delivering it right. Okay. You know, So I could have a song that's really working. People aren't tuning into it, though, because I'm not delivering it in a way that's like, maybe I'm rushing it too fast, or I'm, I'm not present with the song. You know, mm -hmm. So there's a whole a lot of ways it can go and, and in the writing itself there's there's you know there's the pop song structure like you were talking about and I definitely I'm a fan of pop music and I love those kind of songs so I definitely if you hear my songs you'll see a lot of similar structures where we you know verse hook verse bridge hook you know like like all these kind of things but then there's times when I write a song and it breaks every rule of what's going on and and I have to sit and I have to go okay do I want to be in this place 
do I want to let the song be like this, or do I want to like, you know, does it want to be like a structural? Yeah. Right. Or does it want to be a structural? Does it want to be tweaked? And that those are, that's usually if it if it's like that, that's usually when I put the song down, and I'll go do something else, and I'll come back and play it again, and if it's, see if it's still compelling. But I I've never. Yeah, I don't know. I've never had a song. I never had. I've never felt comfortable. And I, and I went to art school, so like I, I'm used to throwing my work up on the wall and getting it, like you know, right. kind of take it apart. What school did you go to? I went to Ithaca College upstate and okay. studied photography. Um, so I, you know, I'm used to that. But I, I don't know the writing. It's like it's almost like the success or failure of the song. The song is there. It's out there. So the success of the song is was I good enough at listening to bring the song in, you know? And if I if I was successful. At listening and bringing the song in, then the song will be successful. As you know, at being being played, for, people will enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, if I wasn't, then either I got to go back and listen some more and try and fix it, or I, I just didn't get it. Let's push it aside and, and we'll move on to the next song. Does that resemble anything like what goes on in your mind? You know, I, I think that that's one of the that's one of the interesting things about being a singer songwriter, versus versus being a songwriter, because if you're out performing your own work and you, especially if you're doing an independent mm -hmm. work, you can be um, more free to to break the rules, yeah. I think, and not stick with structure. If you want to go to Nashville and be a songwriter, then you've got to stick with the rules because right. it is the way it is. In popular music, you've got to stick with the rules because that's what the ear, people's ear and you know, the, whoever makes those decisions, yeah. they're looking for. Um, but if you're, if you're doing your own thing, then you can break the rules and you can sing a song that doesn't necessarily have all those exact things in it. To be a really good songwriter, you know, is there one way that's right or wrong? I don't think so. Nah. Yeah. I think, you know, if you want to if you want to be a, you know, write a song for one of the divas, you know, you got to probably do it the way that you it's follow, done. Yeah. Yeah, you follow the rules. But other than that, I think that's one of the exciting things about being an independent person is that you can, you can play around. somewhere I'm going somewhere I don't know where I'm going I'm going out there I'm going out there to find my way I'm going to get there someday I'm going to get there someday I'm going to get there my way there my way I ramble along like a soft falling rain on a quiet street ramble along with a smile in the face of my defeat ramble along like a soldier through the doubts and through the fears ramble along for a thousand years Big-hearted woman, big-hearted woman, for a warm-hearted man, I need a big-hearted woman. Big-hearted woman, love me for who I am, I'm gonna find her someday. I'm gonna find her someday. I'm gonna find her someday. Find peace, find peace someday, yeah. I ram along across the streams and through the valleys and over hills. Ram along like a horse that pulls a plow and never yields. Ram along with the faith, though I'm far from getting near. 
They were on for a thousand years. I do do da da da. 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 Hip. I do do da da da. I do do da da da. Do do da 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 hip. I do do da da da. And you could like be a country singer songwriter, and be from where Long Island? And be from Long Island. How the hell did that happen? It come, it's out there, it came through me. There's something yeah. in the water on Long Island. Is that in there? Absolutely, yeah. You know, I, I play this stuff for friends of mine from college who hear, like, you know, they hear, hear the stuff or I'll come and play a show. And they're like, what the? You've never been to Detroit. Like, you're, you're a <laughs> hair, spandex, <laughs> flashy, multicolored <laughs> guitar with leopard skin back in the day. And, and now you've got short hair and... You're a folky. And I'm like a folky. I think, I, I, to me, your music sounds very, somewhere between bluegrass and country. Okay. Is that how you hear it? I, everybody's said different things. Like, it's hard to put a label on what it is. I, I think mine kind of spans blues, a little folk. Yeah, 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 country, okay, blues. Country pop. So it's, it, it, to me, it kind of weaves in and out because I've got, you know, a couple, even like the, I consider like before you go a jazz, kind of like a jazz ballad, you know, like the 40s kind of torch song. Um, but it's not. Well, yeah, I mean, I think there's there's more like traditional folk music, you know, blowing in the wind and. Yeah, it's and, not that. You yeah. know, Woody Guthrie and, you know, but I think there's contemporary folk music, which is a bigger pot. Yeah. yeah. And you grew up in Long Island? No, actually, I grew up in White Plains in West Jefferson. Oh, County. well, that explains it. There you go. I'm not really, I'm not really an Islander. And, um, and went to school in Connecticut, and then I lived in California for four years, but Way I wasn't back. playing guitar at the time. Who did you live in California? I lived in San Diego. Oh, yeah, I you left? Ways. I left. Well, I got married. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. We had, dated, we had dated four years long distance. So that was long enough. San Diego. Yeah, we wanted just to be, we wanted in the same state. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. There's something to be said for, you know, but. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard yeah. to spoon. Yeah. Hard to spoon. Across right. country. Yeah. I mean, our, before, you know, before <laughs> package deals on telephones. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. man. The phone bill's $250 from him and $300 on mine. Oh, oh yeah. God. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So Long Island was because of his job. He, he got a job here, and so we moved to Long Island. So did you ever write a love song for your husband? Yeah. Yeah, What Were the Chances is, uh, is one of the ones I wrote for him, because he's from the Philippines. Okay. And so he traveled a long way to find me. What were the chances of your finding me? Travel miles across the sea Said goodbye to friends and family And left your home What were the odds I'd be standing there When you walked in I was so aware Realized I could have been anywhere And still alone Moment by moment and step by step Just as if it were meant to be Little by little and day by day You found your way to me what did Lady Luck have in our face? There was no way we could anticipate. Once we knew we didn't hesitate, we took a vow. Who could have known 
and we'd end up like this. Many years have passed since our first kiss, barely a moment we would have missed. Still love you now. Moment by moment and step by step, just as if it were meant to be little by little and day by day you found your way to me what were the chances of your finding me what were the chances of your finding me what were the chances of your finding me and are you writing on a weekly basis i'm writing but more snippets it for whatever reason right now little short snippets are coming i've got my little mini disc recorder with like all the folders practically full <laughs> and nothing's come in its entirety so i'm i'm honoring that process because a lot of times, it, like I said before, it came together and it would sort of come like as a whole entity. Now I'm just getting bombarded with little stuff, whether it be a little lick. The music or, and the words, just the little bits little of bit, it. And bit. that's how you write it is into your recorder? And I just, I just sing it into the recorder. And if it's going to be a song, it'll tell me. And right. if it's not, you know, because certainly not every idea is meant to be. Generally, I work with both the music and the lyrics at the same time. The music comes as like as kind of like pieces of like the chorus or pieces of a verse, and I start to hear sometimes like phonetically like the melodies with like like almost like the, the consonants and the vowels and the rhyme schemes, but without words. Like I can hear it like like as mm -hmm. if it's like in the distance somewhere, and so I just listen and I could start picking it up and I start bringing it in, and sometimes I'll even write it down phonetically, like and and. What's funny though, and it happens, is, is that I can get two versions of the same song that have totally identical rhyme schemes, but completely different, like themes, huh. like completely. And then I'll go back, and it'll be like if I if I heard me singing in another room and, and couldn't hear exactly what I was saying, it would sound exactly the same, but it would have a completely different meaning. Mm. Any of them biographical? Um, I think parts of them are. Um, one song that I, is, is on the CD that you wouldn't have heard because I don't often play it because it's a ballad. It's called Before You Go. Yes. And literally my family was like, Freddie, do you need to tell us something? Oh my because God. Because it's totally, it's about, you know, someone being left for another woman. Yeah. And, you know, it had nothing to do with me. It came through me, but it wasn't, that was not me. But some of the other ones, I think there's, you know, definitely some of the feisty the feisty chick tunes mm. yeah. have some of my personality in there for sure. Not necessarily totally autobiographical, but definitely, I say they're, they're my, my, my feisty girl songs, I think there's definitely, yeah, exactly. Are any of your songs written for people um, who you feel negatively about? Yeah, but you know what, I, I'm, really, <laughs> I'm really on a, like a Buddhist journey oh. of, of acceptance, which is, if, if there's something that you're doing that's bugging me, yeah, it's your issue, but it's also my issue. And I have a switch, and I can make a choice. Do I react, or do I not? And you know, if somebody's got a gun to my head, okay, there's a real, right. but a lot of the stuff that we get really, really annoyed about in our lives is a matter of choice. Amen. But I think, I think positive energy is a lot more healthy for the planet. A man gets out his gun, makes his way onto a plane. He flies over Alaska, intent to find his game. Not too hard to spot them, dark gray fur against the snow. A pack of wolves, the snow is deep, the hunter knows they're slow. Our choice, one voice, our choice, one voice. 
A polar bear swims out 60 miles from the shore. The ice where he once hunted cannot hold him anymore. Though he is a fine swimmer, he grows thin and he gets weak. He's out too far, he can't turn back, the ocean's black and deep. Our choice one voice, our choice one voice. Eagle flies over the river, he's come back to find his home. Exhausted but keeps flying because all the trees are gone. Fish, they have been poisoned. Eagles, babies, they will die. He has no say, he must go on. Eagles can't ask why. Our choice one voice, our choice one voice. A child leaves his home, walks along through toxic air. His breathing, it is labored. Those in power need to care. Child feels the earth is crying, but he's too young to have a say. Time is short. It's up to us to find a better way. Our choice, one voice. Our choice, one voice. Time is short. It's up to us to find a better way. Our choice, one voice. Our choice, one voice. Time is short. It's up to us to find a better way. Our choice, one voice. Our choice, one voice. Do you have an experience with like creating the CD, for, you know, knowing that it's going to happen and choosing what mood you're going to be in? We're getting ready to make the next CD, but I wouldn't have done that or gotten ready to do that if I didn't have the songs. I think I, I, you see a lot with artists, so their first record is just killer. You know, there'll be some really good stuff on there. They spent their whole life writing that record. Yeah. You know, or, or a long time. And now you find yourself out and you have a considerably shorter amount of time maybe that you're going to write this next group in, of songs in. And, you know, if, if you're on a label or something, you're getting pressure to do that. So, you know, What's nice to being outside of, of you know being an independent musician, you get to balance that a little bit. You get to say, I can take my time to write the record, and then I can hopefully get enough good material to make this second record. Hopefully, will be an improvement or an evolution over the first record. And, and I think that's a mistake a lot of a lot of uh, bands and artists make, in that they they go to make their record before it's ready. You know, I, I write over the top of it, so I wrote, you know, there's, you know, 15, 16 songs that I think are contenders, and then we'll re make the record, and we'll see how many songs make it, you know, for the record, so. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I sort of put the cart before the horse. I really okay. wasn't out there performing, uh -huh. and I did, I produced my CD, so I did what, sort of the flip-flop of what most people do. Right. They're out performing, and they're writing, and then they do the CD. Mine just was like, I had to do, I had to do, mine was a compulsion, I had to do the CD. Uh -huh. It was interesting because my nephew had actually been one of the people who said that to me when I was deciding what songs. So, well, you know, you could put them all on there because you did work on them in a similar time frame. So when you go to get ready for the next CD, are they going to necessarily fit? I made the decision not to put them all on for various reasons, mm -hmm. but if they don't necessarily fit in, if, if you know the next CD becomes a little bit more thematic, then I'll hold them out as singles or hold them out to the next CD. So you know, I, I don't think that they're wasted songs just because they're written and they're ready to go. Right. If they don't necessarily fit, if there is you know that thread that yeah. you know is is seen in a CD, I don't think they're wasted songs because you can still perform them. And there's other, you know, other avenues now, especially with all the options that we have out there to get music out into the world. I'd like to drink punch with you. I'd like to make lunch for you. I'd like to make eyes at you. I'd like to take you home. I'd like to drink wine with you I'd like to waltz and find dine with you I'd like to walk a thin line with you I'd like to take you home not to my mother's
Rose, I'd like to take you home for the night. Bye now. Take care. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> I apologize for burping throughout the Did whole Did you set. burp? You guys be talking out here like, oh my God. <laughs>